feel of here a country and its institutions, its leaders, of all of the public powers, not only the population, but also leaders of the public powers. The U.S. since July the 31, after the defeat, the fascism in the electoral polls and in the streets, there will be sanctions asking those sanctions with public lists of Maria Machado, the head of Venezuelan fascism. The head of fascism asked for more sanctions against Venezuela, against the country. Specifically, she is responsible for all of the threats and psychological campaigns that are, exist without a doubt. But the immediate reaction that had the so-called sanctions was enormous, the reaction of the judicial Venezuelan power from uh, the Supreme Court of Justice, the reaction of the electoral power of Venezuela and the Bolivarian armed forces of Venezuela and the reaction of the chancellors of Venezuela was a reaction that put the, this attempt, this despicable attempt of government of the United States in a very bad place for in attempting to damage Venezuela. We need to see the face of the arrogance, the arrogance of a government that pretend, intends to be the police of the world, the government of the world, the judge of the world, who gave them the power to threaten publicly, to blackmail publicly the justicers of an independent country as Venezuela, the leaders of an independent, of the electoral power of a country as Venezuela, and the military leaders of our country and important officials of the government who gave them that power to the government of the United States. Well, really, today in the pluripolar world that has emerged, we see more and more ridiculous these kinds of illegal actions, immoral actions, that instead of putting pressure towards that country, instead of creating some kind of fear inside of the country, what does is enhance the consciousness, anti-imperialist and the battle power of the people. What I was saying to a group of militaries is that those so-called sanctions are decorations that inspire the fights of our people. The Boldo Castillo in a program was in a phase stage of the tourniquet operation. So they call this phase stage of the sanctions as he revealed it with a journalist. These are t people are too trash that doesn't deserve comments. They, this operation will get them. Greetings, President. We continue with news, and I'm going to read headlines of the journal El Universal. Media reveal the identity of the s supposed attack, be uh, a person who attacked Trump, person of 58 years, suspect of the attempt of murder Donald Trump, former president. I've been following this news since yesterday in the afternoon when we knew about a second attempt. Very unfortunate, this news that assert that the status of health of the uh, United States society and the status of the uh, government and democracy in the United States is bad. The health of the political system of the United States is 
very the it's bad and the uh, situation of the American society is terrible. We could spend hours here talking about indicators of the decline of moral and cultural of this the main powerhouse that has reached in the 21st century as a declining powerhouse. The health of the society and the political system is terrible. And if the people of the US don't take charge of the situation, terrible circumstances could arrive for the society of the United States. I don't want to do forecasts, but uh, it's it can be observed at first sight. Everything that has been revealed uh, about the identity of the person who attempted this murder against former President Trump was a fan. Everything that was asserted by the FBI was noted and said yesterday. He said something like this. I don't know if you saw this. Snowden said that it's impossible that the CIA of the United States didn't know about this kind of threat when this man is part of the system. This man who attempted to murder Trump is part of the system. What is behind this? From the first attempt is public the failures that there was about security. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, because I know a lot about attempts, attempted murders that they have carried out against me. Uh, the government of the United States and parliamentary groups of Colombia pursue me every single day of my life during all these years. And I can rapidly understand that behind this, there's something very dangerous that is being planned again, former president, presidential candidate Donald Trump. He must know more than what he is stating and hope that investigations carry out. A person, friend of mine, was saying, it seems like we are in a crazy uh, hour of the power of the United States. They not only want to cause a total war and increment genocide against the Palestinian people in Gaza, they not only want to defeat all of the progressive governments of Latin America and the Caribbean, but they also in their internal policy. There are shameful events, very worrisome, as the second attempted murder of former President Donald Trump. Personally, I ratify President Donald Trump from Venezuela. The, we repudiate this attempted murder, and I say direct you the investigation about this to know the truth of who order and directs this if kinds of events. And I wish health and long life for you to be able to carry out the projects you want. It is not the attempt, not the coup d'etat, or the harassment, or the violence, what has to rule in the life of our government must be respect for life and peace above all. President from the United States, we move to Russia. Russia uh, uh, in front of the, the United Nations. Uh, NATO will carry out a war. The crazy hour, 1, 2 p.m. when there's a party in Venezuela, they play a lot of music. which is the music they play from every era.
they dance and the crazy hours start. Everything is possible in this world today. I have a guest in that chair you see there. In that chair, a special guest will sit who has a lot of information about this crazy hour topic. The chair is reserved for him there. He is about to arrive. He comes with proofs of what I call the crazy hour. Who rules in Washington? Who decides? Who says what it must be done? Who authorized, authorizes the war against Russia and NATO? Who authorizes all of these actions? And the terrorist war against Venezuela? Who authorizes giving power of fascism in Venezuela and the conspiracy against Venezuela? The crazy hour. Luckily, there are people very minds with a lot of mindset, like Vladimir Putin, who has control over the situation. And I have no doubt that Russia will end up with the outbreaks of fascism in Ukraine, and peace will prevail in Ukraine and Russia sooner or later. Well, President, you were saying in the electoral campaign that there was a void of power in the United States. Yes, you were saying it. we have been seeing this topic in the public debate with the people. We're going to analyze another headline of journal El Vistazo related to President of Ecuador, Daniel Novoa. It states, Daniel Novoa communicate reforms to allow military bases, foreign military bases in Ecuador. I've been saying it, the cause of new colonialism in South America is fascism, and two heads of fascism is our Millet in Argentina and Novoa in Ecuador. Millet gave uh, territory of South Atlantic to South Command. They are building military, ma military bases in Argentina. The Argentina of Jose San Martin, of Perón, of Nestor is going to have military bases to be controlled by the Southern Command. How much worth the independence of our land 200 years ago? In Ecuador, the President Rafael Correa freed Ecuador, offered freedom to Ecuador from military bases. But this man, this fascist, a responsible man then is saying to the United States, I'm ready to do what you want to do. He bends the knee to the geopolitical interests of the United States. The project, Madele, fellow mates, the project of imperialism is what I was saying in the World Anti-Fascist Congress in Caracas. The purpose of them is to grant the vital space. The same concept of Hitler in his book, you have to review it and you will see it. They propose ahead of a pluripolar world, the consolidation of BRICS, the consolidation of superpowers of the 21st century, China, the second superpower of the world, Russia. They plan control over what they call their vital space, what they believe that is their backyard. And the project is not respecting our sovereignty. It is not respecting the democracy of our countries. The project is imposing with the power of social media imposing submissive governments that follow the interests of the United States. It's a new colonialism, but Latin America and the Caribbean will not remain uh, quiet. The people of Ecuador is also the people that was free 
because ARM is from Sucre and Bolivar unified and also from Anolis side is uh, people with dignity and I'm sure that the people of Ecuador is going to react to this colonialist project of Novoa. I'm sure about it, but we must open our eyes what they is what they also want for Venezuela. If Milays and Novoas and Machado had political power in Venezuela through a puppet, they would uh, they want to turn Venezuela into the new colony of Venezuela, of the United States military colony and they would try to destroy two hundred years of glory and fight that our people had to impose a colonial model. We don't have middle term in this moment of history. During the past, the United States used uh, military invasions, invading Nicaragua, Panama, and Dominican Republic, Grenade, and carried out coup d'etat in Chile, Uruguay, Argentina, and a lot more. Invasions, coup d'etat, missing people, they don't care. They didn't care about it. Then there was a time where they imposed demagogy, manipulation, lie, electoral frauds. They are experts on this in the United States until Chavez arrived and the Revolu Bolivarian Revolution arrived. And then we had the first spring. We're living what we could say the the sunrise of a new spring where we don't have uh, middle term or them or us with our project. Now we're going to review the news of the week. Okay, you can continue. Uh, you will tell us if this, what is happening in Ecuador, has something to do with what we're going to say now that you're going to reveal with your special guest and also the Bolivarian government reveal this terrorist plan directed by a military active in the United States. Diosdado Cabello, Minister of Internal Affairs, in plans of uh, destabilizing. This is a headline. Headline, reveal terrorist plan against Venezuela directed by military of the United States denounces Diosdado Cabello, Minister of Internal Affairs, who is our special guest in the secret chair. Go ahead. That's the chair of Diosdado. Welcome. Could you give him a microphone? There are a lot of things to talk about. We're here talking about current issues and international and national affairs. And Diosdado Javier Rondon has arrived precisely. Last Saturday, we denounced that for the main elements of investigations and results, screenshots, that intelligence of Venezuela has been able to produce fighting terrorist plans. All of the terrorist plans that have been discovered and proved, the people captured are imprisoned and have confessed. As a good lawyer m might say, this is ratifying what we have been denouncing. I did it across the country. I did it during my travel for 300 cities and towns. I was saying to the people, do you want peace? And people answered strongly, yes. And I was saying, they don't because we had a lot of elements of what the plan was about to use the electoral process 
as a trigger of a growing violent process that according to the people who planned this in the United States and the fascists that we all know here as La Sayona should ended in should have ended in a political assault in Venezuela. We have seen several chapters of a movie that seems to repeat. This is like the fifth season of Netflix of a perpetual conspiracy fascist against the Bolivarian model. We have seen 24, 29, 28, 29, 30 of July violence and crimes, the um, criminals that they na name now political prisoners. And then the press of the United States saying freedom for the prisoners, prisoners who destroyed and burned all of them, most of them with uh, criminal records. Then we saw the attempt of calling for filled with violence, their own mobilizations. They they wanted to try to attack their own mobilizations, which were international or national. And then after that, the attack of the electric system, where they wanted to shut down the country for several days to reactivate their little commandos, very violent and terrorist as they are. And then this whole state, as it has been proved, was the participation of the government of the United States and the CIA. The government of the United States didn't expect that we had the capacity to capture the head of operation of this terrorist plan against Venezuela. An active military recognized as like that for the government of the United States. We have proofs. What Minister Diosado Cabello has shown is not even the 10 percent of the proofs that the, the bodies of justice have right now of the public ministry, and that involve not only this Navy Seal, not only him, but also pacifist tourists that wanted to plant bombs and kill of several European nationalities and that involves directly a net of a net of prepaid all to El Llano that move in Colombia and where the operational base uh, uh, articulate the plan of Aragua train operating grave terrorist actions against f uh, public facilities as the headquarters of the judicial powers, the National Assembly, against military facilities, barracks of Venezuela, police stations, and against important military and civil leaders of the Bolivarian Revolution. So this is whole a plan that I might say is going to be revealed. The history continues. So we might hear Diosdado. We can ask him all of the questions. Minister Diosdado Cabello, so far, what is the main hypothesis of this investigation? Who directs this and where? And who finances and where the weapons come from? And what is all this movement about? Why the CIA is linked to this? And why, for the first time, appears the so called Spanish? CNI. What is the CNI? 
Greetings to all Venezuela president. Well, this week on Saturday, we went to media, communication media, to report of an investigation that was being carried out uh, from the security bodies of Venezuela. And we opened three fronts there terrorism, actions of terrorism, mercenaries, and, and also armaments. So we informed our country that more than 400 weapons had been captured. 400, they can say it fast, they might say whatever they want, but there were 400 equipment for 400 men to care, uh, prepare them against our people. Then who were at the head of this? We started this investigation with a denouncement. You did. They wanted to carry out an attack with grenades some places, which was discovered by internal international and national sources of intelligence. We started the investigation, captured some people. These people had their phones, and we found information on their phones that links this attack with terrorist attacks with grenades. They throw some, threw some in Patalos in the House of Justice. very celebrated in social media of the right, this kind of attack. That is correct because anything of this has several characteristics. They are supporting the destabilization of Venezuela. They have some people who start to talk about their relations and their link and names start to appear. And this investigation, some people linked to Arawa's train appear. We had several informations that El Niño Guerrero is in Venezuela and was uh, for the CIA uh, recruited him and all of this was part of a uh, cover to blackmail him and make him part of the government of the United States and the aggression against Venezuela directed uh, in part by the Niño Guerrero on July 29, 30, and 31. Venezuela must know uh, he and his train of Aragua, his group, is articulated directly with a plan as we have proved it today with the proof that we obtained with the military of the United States that will be placed in the um, attorney's offices. Then we received the information from several sources, mercenaries. We start giving follow-up to someone who trades, uh, dedicates to sexual trade, a woman that was a couple of the second head of Aragua's train a woman that practices prostitution and was sentimental couple of the second head of the Aragua's train who was murdered. And Wilbur Joseph Castañeda, this North American military, established contact with him, travels to Venezuela and they first met in Colombia and traveled to Venezuela. They coordinate an operation that had the date of the elections of July 28th. Some days before, they delivered in the streets signs where they said, that on July the 28th, they were going to Miraflores 
no matter how the results of the published by the CNE would be. Something is happening here, President. We say what they are going to do, but they don't give up. This is not new. It has always been like this. I'm always remembered it. it. Since the coup data of April 2002, on January 2002, it was proved with recordings. Jorge Rodriguez exposes, post, uh, revealed um, in, in detailed information about this coordinate, and they said it was a lie. The government of Colombia of that time said it was a lie and moved forward with this. We think that this can be dissuasive to avoid bloodbaths, but they continued with this on the 28th, and the purpose is to end up the government of President Glas Maduro. There are some actions, because in your presentation on Saturday, are three countries involved the United States, Spain, and Ecuador. You were saying that they migrated from Colombia to Ecuador. I'm going to read a reaction here placed on La Secta portal. Foreigns reveal that, deny that Spain is involved in an operation of political destabilization in Venezuela. So I want to ask you, has it been dialogue with the authorities of Spain beyond this? Have they called you to explain something? Well, first I was talking with Diosdado that the immediate reaction in media, the most important media of the right of Spain was defensive. In a surprising way, they were prepared to show their version of the story because they have a story to conspire and another version to victimize the murderers, terrorists, victimize the criminals. Now it turns out that they, are, they were good people, tourists that were traveling and were captured by the Venezuelan dictatorship regime and disappeared. This all denounced on Saturday, 2 p.m., 8 p.m. in Spain, in Spain. At 10 p.m. in Spain, they had some record recordings from the parents of this captured terrorist saying that they were good people and they were just in, on vacation. Then, on the early morning of Spain, they showed new recordings denouncing that in Venezuela these good people disappeared. And in a main program of a television channel called La Secta against Boli the Bolivarian and Venezuelan government, they show a story of a Colombian called Mauricio Bernal, I remember the whole name, who says that he's the owner, uh, the person who booked the hotel of these poor boys. Diosdado denounced that all of this Terrorists in their free time are setting bombs. It says a new kind of tourism, adventure tourism, putting bombs and killing people here. We might call it explosive uh, tourism. This Colombian says the owner of the hotel that they t he took the, these boys to the border and they were captured by the aerial forces and they were 
and when he listened to Diosdado, he laughed at these accusations. They had the story to cover the crime and the criminals. Yes, President, this person knows a set that all of these people involved were in a hotel in Colombia. I never revealed the name of the hotel. I never revealed the name of the hotel. I said all of them were in Colombia in the same hotel, booked by Jordan Barilla, uh, accused of murdering a young man. And this person all of a sudden comes out saying that they were in their ho in his hotel. I never mentioned a hotel, which seems to show that he's part of this. He knows more than what he's saying. Well, in the Puerto Ayacucho airport, there were other people probably that had to give him feedback to this person. The issue of tourism precedent and part of the Caribbean, I like to like, but vacation on Europe ended a long ago. It's hardly that someone in Europe goes on vacation on September. They go on vacation on July and August. We got the information that there were a system of hotel with a main hotel in Bogota where we're arriving a group of terrorists sent from the United States and from Europe. They got desperate and reveal the image of the coordinator of this operation that uh, moves and transfer terrorists from the border of Colombia to Venezuela. And it was revealed due to desperation. They had the story and were preparing it since they were captured and delivered to the courts of Venezuela. We didn't make a public denounce and they had prepared a response that they reveal automatically in the media of the extreme right of Spain. What is calling my attention is how the CNI of Spain is operating against Venezuela. It's the Center, National Center of Intelligence of Spain. It's an autonomous institution that depends on the CIA and carry out, carries out operations on the whole world following instructions of the CIA. It's an agency that is appears in the Ministry of Defense. We heard the minister attacking Venezuela in an act which was, um, and they decided, well, they knew what was going on. But these tourists, so-called tourists, had contacts with a person, what, what they call prepaid in that net. Where is it in Colombia? In which part? We reserve the information. He moves in different places, not only there. There are other hotels. Didn't I say it? This person, one of the plans with them had to do with the assassination of a major mayor there in Bolivar's estate to generate violence. They had communication with someone they call Yan, which uh, has been detained from the Czech Republic, part of uh, mercenary groups that operates in Europe. Let's see, and I knows that they have been recruiting people from different nationalities. They know that they have a very well task here in Venezuela and gave to French missionaries taking the 
Venezuelan airport and they know that these two men work for them. And when we developed this, we took decisions to check and review and take measures. Today, we can assure that all of the weapons that have arrived come from the United States. It's very characteristic. We can show it. What kinds of weapons are these? M4 a It's a rifle. Has It's a high quality rifle. This tip here is to put a suppressive of sound, has a telescope with median reach. It's a rifle built by the military forces of the United States, only used by the military forces of the United States. Its commercialization is forbidden because it's exclusive for of the military forces of the United States. We have several rifles like this. I'm not going to reveal the numbers, series. The government of the United States knows that we have this rifle and more weapons that were uh, taken from introduced in Venezuela to carry out fascist attacks. Restricted government of the United States. This is weapons traffic. This is the official weapon of the Navy SEAL. Castaneda is a uh, active military at the head of this operation, recognized for the government of the United States that has declared it, expert in explosives, in combat, in long and short weapons, who was in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in missions in, in both countries. As he confessed in Colombia, he was training a group of people. He was in the government of Ivan Duque, who was training him there in Colombia. A link with the Aragua train is this lady prostitute who was couple of the second head of a Aragua train who was murdered and he took him, brought him to Venezuela and granted his getaway. Can you show the picture? This picture is from Mr. Joseph Castaneda in the march provoked for Maria Galina Machado fascism in Dallas, Texas, August 17, ignoring the uh, official electoral results in Venezuela. All of these pictures and more are part of what the ones he kept in his phone. He was in Venezuela on July the 28th, and then he left the country. These ins and outs were facilitated for this person that has been detained from the Aragua train. Where are they captured? In a parish that is X of the battle of the security forces of Venezuela against the Aragua train. It's one of the places in Aragua because when he was captured, he was moving to reactivate criminal groups in all of the central region of Caracas to activate attacks 
and he had a contact in the United States, also part of the arrival train called El Flaco, which was in charge of moving contacts out of the central region of the country, focused on Petare and some neighborhoods in Caracas, which contacts were involved, some criminal moving the, some criminal groups to activate them when they uh, created the, the attacks directed by this uh, military act captured from the United States. He has on his phone conversations from July 28th, 30 and 31 with this person, El Flaco. Uh, this person is not here in Venezuela. Can you show a picture of him? We have in here, which is protected by the government of the United States. Because all of these sectors that they call for violence, for civil war, invasion, magnesium in Venezuela, they are refugees that are protected in the territory of the United States of America, which violates international rights, and specifically the foundational act of the United Nations. In this moment, the government of the United States is violating the United, the United Nations Act with their uh, actions promoting violence in Venezuela. President, precisely, we had another headline has to do with this hotel owner. We have the sound of Mauricio because precisely he's stating that he moved these tourists through a boat. We are the operators in the Department of Guinea, Colombia. We had there Jose Maria and Andres who were traveling and stayed in our hotel. They traveled with us. Last time we saw them, They were taking a boat that was going to move them to Venezuela. Then through different research we carried out with some friends we have in Venezuela. They were detained by the aerial force of Venezuela. But what they said is that they were very nervous and they were, what were the, were Spanish citizens doing in Venezuela? As far as I know, it's just suspicions. Because now they say that they're planning something against Maduro when they were all the time in Colombia. Well, this is a story to cover and normalize the situation of terrorists who were captured and now are in prison with proofs of their actions they were carrying out in Venezuela to murder people and set bombs, etc. Some people know who know about this, CNI um, were telling us that these two people might be agents, covert agents uncover agents, their family or friends never will reveal if they are two agents of the CNI. The government of the United States recognized that was a military of high rank for them, expert in murdering. Also, President, remember we have expert hacker of the United States linked to a uh, mafia of hackers of Israel, which is detained. Two more US citizens besides Castaneda. Look what was the story they tried to show us about Navy SEAL, the military of the United States. They said that he was in Venezuela 
the story they showed this person and their relatives that he was in Venezuela because he was in love with this lady and he came because of that love and when the government of the United States recognized that there was military personnel in Venezuela who had no permission to be in Venezuela some links sent by the United States repeated the same story they gave us and they say well he was in love and due to this love he visited Venezuela he didn't ask for permission he had to ask for permission to uh, travel to Venezuela but the story is denied when all of his conversations are revealed where he directs personally the violent actions in the city of Caracas, Petare, along with this uh, so-called El Flaco, and directs in a very, the, what they were looking for, which was assaulting the presidential palace Miraflores on July 29, 30, and 31. We will talk about this um, forward about who ordered and financed this, because we all have all of these elements in the investigations, the assault of Falas of uh, Miraflores, Monday and Tuesday, 29 and 30, where we were directing the reestablishment of peace in the country. This is a different topic, but here are the proofs that you can um, publish all of their links and this already is shown some places. I was remember that as part of the Hedion operation on May 2020, days before Hedion operations, some shotguns took place in the neighborhood where we like see group operates. And then you showed a video with the testimony of alias Pepero who confessed that was a destruction operation directed by who escaped from prison and now we listen to Petare again what's happening there why the fixation of these groups with Petare Parish well that's a permanent investigation they have recluded criminal groups at our train, the Llano train, with Lexi, which are part precisely of a strategy practiced by the United States in the countries they want to destabilize to colonize them. Same they did it on Iran in the 1950s to um, carry out a coup d'etat against the president. They uh, hired criminal bands in Tehran to attack specific sectors of the city. And then the coup d'etat came 50 years later. They recognized that it was caused by the CIA. And they recognized it because President Mosharet, uh, along with Carlos Delgado Salvo, promoted the creation of what OPEC was. Same they did in Libya recently, in the eastern province of Benghazi. They articulated NATO and the government of the United States with the criminal groups of that region of Benghazi. And first thing they did was opening the gates of the prisons of Benghazi and create criminal groups and march along with this group of mercenary uh, to the capital. That was the start of the attack against Libya that took Libya to the state where a lot of people died and chaos happened. And same with a with Haiti articulation with criminal groups, uh, thousands of weapons in the streets to keep Heidi, king, queen of freedom, 
of the Caribbean subjected to violence, chaos, and in the chaos, in anarchy and violence, who rules the strongest? So it's part of the models they apply in the different countries. Here the same. Last year, I didn't say it, I believe, last year we carried out an uh, attack against several eight prisons, including the prison of Tokoron, Tokuyito, and some other, because we had the information, the information that they were preparing 2023, last year, eight explosions uh, caused by criminals to take uh, eight important cities with these criminals. They don't stop with their evilness, their perversion. This is being repeated now because when we capture the three involved in the issue of the grenades in their telephone, we found someone called Jose Estrada, which is um, was condemned for a magnificent attempt against the president of the republic. And they had an operation in several prisons of the country to set, um, to release the detainees. And we had 14 heads of band that were detainees. And we have, were interrogating them. They are going to repeat this. Um, now using explosives in the streets, in the prisons, they repeat this, they don't stop, and they believe that the state is going to be careless at some point. We have more dead and there are more detainees and weapons um, confiscated. When were they confiscated? And what stage of this plan was revealed? And what would have happened if this would have continued? Just to talk about the issue of tourists, Chirion also said they were good boys, good tourists. I have forgotten. In the beaches of Chuava, they were practicing tourism, tanning. That is right, good boys. Um, they were just traveling on vacation in, on the beach. And here, the touristic guys were expecting them, all of them. They believe that we are uh, idiots, that we will believe in, their, in them. Today, all of these weapons come from the United States, all of them. Today, thank you to the intelligence. Before the program, somewhere in Venezuela, we confiscated weapons again, something that is ongoing right now. The security forces are acting to so that peace prevail in Venezuela because she asks and I answer, what would have happened? We would have fought and triumphed. And maybe they would have been de defeated for the National Bolivarian Police and Armed Forces of Venezuela because Venezuela has police, military, and security forces that defend them, defend it. And that is what they don't understand. Venezuela not only has the protection and blessing of God, we are a blessed country that is living, um, always set the example of the ex exorcist. There is the exorcist moving his head, but we don't put the crucifix down. We put it 
um, high. This, in the end, is a fascist Nazi project full of hatred and revenge, but they couldn't do it and they will not be able to do it. Some detail of these last confiscations are the same weapons with the same characteristic are worse than these ones. And the hotels are the same ones or were used for the heady on operation. No, but all of the people involved he detained here in Venezuela visited that hotel in this new stage with the weapons I'm not gonna say about. But they were surprised of seeing the president when we showed um, cargo of the weapons. What they wanted is to prove them that they were 400. They might not believe it. How is it possible that in the United States, where they have fabrics to create um, weapons? What was the picture of the? What was the rifle used by the attempted murder of Donald Trump? Is mm, it was revealed, but it's not something new. Professor Samoncada and philosopher Perez Villa denounced it. The United States of America has secret fabrics of Russian weapons. Chinese weapons, European weapons, and weapons of all nationalities. And when it's involved in a con international conflict, it arms their military groups with those uh, weapons. But, but when people like the one we have captured in, are involved, they bring the weapons produced by the government of the United States. Here we have the list. It's a company specialized in fabricating rifles of the AK brand kind. The ones we confiscated say the this we see there. The five for the peace of Venezuela continues. Our country is a blessed nation and has who defends it. And we, the ones who defend Venezuela, the immense majority of the good people of this country are going to preserve peace and sovereignty. And we're going to have an end of a uh, year happy with harmony to keep working. I was saying these days, What is the purpose of a human being? The purpose of a society. From 12,000 years of civilization called so-called human, because it seems like the desire of Ali still is not achieved to be human, um, humanity. What is the objective, happiness? And Bolivar said it on February 15, 1819, on Angostura, when he saw the Cons Constitutional Congress that founded Colombia, the state of the Third Republic. Bolivar founded the Third Republic. We have, we are in a fifth one right now. The third one was the one of Bolivar. The fifth one is the Bolivarian. In that Third Republic, Bolivar creates the doctrine of Bolivarianism, the state to be built, create a republic, and break links with monarchy, break links with uh, colonies, and create our republic. Same republic in those times is like today saying socialism, republic from the public, equity, freedom, was saying Bolivar. I take him I take him from his five 
the best system of government is the one that proportionates to the people the biggest social happiness possible, the biggest political stability, and the biggest social security and happiness was the first time that we talked about it. What is our purpose? To have peace, stability, being independent, sovereign, build our own economic, cultural, social model. What for? To have the biggest social happiness of our people possible, the biggest political stability, and the biggest social security. Our people is condemned to happiness and life. We finish this section. I thank to the special guests and the journalists, and we will see the beauty and the miracle that a country as Venezuela can do in program Con Maduro Mas. We were live to Caracas, Venezuela, where President Nicolás Maduro offered statements during the podcast Con Maduro Mas. In his remarks, the president referred to the recent package of sanctions imposed by the United States against the country and how the far right wing is the one asking for these unilateral sanctions to be applied to damage essentially the Venezuelan people. Regarding the recent attempt against the life of U.S. candidate and former President Donald Trump, Nicolas Maduro, the president, assured that it shows the decline of U.S. politics and how the White House not only wants to defeat progressive governments worldwide, but there are also shameful events taking place inside the U.S. society. The Minister of Interior and Justice, Diosdado Cabello, also offered statements and regarding the recent dismantling of terrorist actions against the country that also had the involvement of the U.S. During their words of closure, both leaders assured that in the face of this reality, Venezuela will always defend peace. This is all for the moment. Stay tuned with From the South.